Yes, I'm making a video. This is Tracy White again, uh, continuing on with my video series. T. Earl on the uh, UE4 forums, and my wonderful son in the background giving me a hard time. Okay. All right, so up to now we've uh, made a maze. We've got some gameplay, we've got some blueprints, and uh, and then we even did a little matinee, and that matinee was based on this level, which is not considered a playable level to me. It's just uh, going to be my opening level where a menu is going to show up. But before we get into menus, we're going to have to do a, a bunch of other stuff um, because I want to be able to have each level have something unique to it, and that will be its best time, a little message uh, at the beginning of each level, and uh, I, I need to, to know which level to load, whether it's unlocked, whether you've completed it or not, and we're going to do that through save game stuff. So we're going to be talking about save game in this video, and then we'll move on to some UMG uh, widgets and menus and stuff like that. All right, so just to get started here, what I'm going to do is show you um, a save uh, game blueprint. I have one here already made, Maze Save Game, but just to show you how it was made, you can do a new blueprint, and it, when you type in your search classes, you type in Save Game, check the Save Game um, type, and then it comes up with your you can name it whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whenever you open that up, you can see it's blank and there's uh, nothing in it. That's where you start, you know, adding your variables in and uh, create your save game data. All right, so we're going to look at my. I'm going to delete this this one, and we're going to look at the, the uh, save maze save game uh, that I created. It's got several variables in it. All of these variables are arrays. The reason they are arrays is because I want something unique per level uh, and I need to store something unique per level. Um, so that's why it's an array. Okay, so I have a couple of booleans, a couple of integers, and a couple of name variables. The booleans are level complete, and that's a true false. By default, and I've only got five elements set up because we're going to start with five levels for this series and eventually I'm going to build like a hundred levels if I ever can find time. Uh, by default none of them are complete so uh, none of my elements are marked as true. For level unlocked however the first level is going to be unlocked which means you can select it in the level select menu and play it. If it was not set to true you wouldn't be able to play any of the levels. So in the way our menu system is going to work, whenever you press play, the level select menu will come up and you'll um, be able to see what levels you've completed and which levels are unlocked. The level uh, after the last one completed is always unlocked. Best times. All right, so best time variable is going to be the best time for each level. I've set the defaults for 999 seconds because I don't know if anybody is going to really take that long to do any of these levels. So the first time you play a level you're gonna get the best time. However, the second time you play through a level you might beat your level time and that time will be saved. Alright, level index for menu. Um, this is going to be used whenever we create our level menu. Uh, this is the text that's gonna go in each button. Alright, level name. Level name is the actual name of the maps that are going to be each level. So we'll, when we create levels, we'll create level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Alright, start level text, totally unnecessary, but I thought it'd be cool. At the beginning of each level, um, a, a little menu is going to pop up, and it's going to display the best time for that level, and a little, little message um, that's unique to each level. For example, this one this is the easiest level, no tricks. That's going to be displayed on level one and I have stuff uh, for each level so far. All right, that's it for our maze save game uh, blueprint. We don't need that anymore. Okay, something important to go over real quick is going to be the floor tile. Uh, I don't know if you remember the end tile. I mean the end tile uh, from the blueprint 
video, the simple blueprint video, one of the things that was on this was a uh, level index. Let me go over to my end tile. So I have a level index variable. This is something that's going to be set by the level designer. So for example, on level one, um, you know, we'll, we'll set our level index to zero. On level two, we'll set our level index to one, and so on and so on, because this is what's going to be used to call the, the specific data for that level uh, out of the array that is in our maze save game. Okay, so on our ball pawn, I also have a level index uh, variable, and that's going to get that from the end tile. The way that happens is on begin play, and I've got this all set up already. I got a reference to uh, player pawn. You can do that just by right click, clicking and type in get player pawn. And then I dragged off the return value and did a cast to uh, our ball pawn, BP ball pawn, which is where all the magic happens. And knowing that on our ball pawn we have this level index variable, I can drag off of here and set level index. So I'm going to set that level index. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to set that level index to whatever the this uh, blueprint's level index is. So that's exactly what I've done here, and that happens on begin play. That passes this uh, the, the end tiles level index to the ball pawn, which will be used later on to pull up the best time for a level, whether a level is locked or unlocked, or completed or not completed, and the level name to load that next level. All right, so on our ball pawn, we're going to uh, worry about this save game stuff because it's pretty important. I've got set up on my ball pawn um, variables, arrays, that look pretty much exactly like what's on my maze save game uh, blueprint. I think I left out something because I don't need it. Yeah, level index for menu, which is going to be used elsewhere. All right, the other thing that I've added in here is a save game connection. And basically, I just added a variable. And the variable type, if you type in save game, it is save game. All right, so that's exactly what my save game connection is. I did it, I did that because whenever I tried casting directly to my uh, maze save game, it didn't work for some weird reason. <laughs> but maybe somebody can enlighten me on that. All right, so whenever we begin play, we're going to check does save game exist. Now I've got all this set up already, but I'm still going to go through for you on how to do it. You just drag off and you type does and save game exists comes up because it's context sensitive. Does same save game exist? So in the slot name you have to put the name of the file that you're going to save as your save game. I put a maze save. So all of our save game data is going to go into a file called a maze save. Alright, does save game exist? This will return a true or a false. So we do a branch and if there is a save game, it's going to follow the true branch, and if there is not a save game, it's going to follow the false branch. So let's take a look real quick in my uh, documents under Unreal Projects, A Maze, my saved folder. I'm going to I'm going to delete this uh, saved uh, game folder. So you can see there's no saved game in here at all. Um, so we're going to follow the false branch. If there's no save game, the first thing we're going to do is create a save game object. And the class is going to be based on our maze save game. That way it will have all of those variables that we had put in there in it. From here what I did is I just grabbed my um, save game connection uh, again whenever I cast before. I don't know why it wouldn't work, but it does. And then uh, my save game object goes into my connection and then I did a get for this and whenever I dragged off of that I could cast to my uh, to maze save game 
So now we have a cast to uh, maze save game, and all we're going to do from there is uh, we drag off of that and do save game to slot. And uh, that's, that's all we did here. And my slot name, of course, is a maze save. Well, let's test that out, knowing that we don't have in our folder here a save game. I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and then I'm going to hit stop. Now we have save, save games folder, and in there we have our save game called a maze save. So it recognized that it wasn't there and created our save game. Very cool. Working as intended. All right, so now when we launch the game, it's going to check, does save game exist, a maze save, and it's going to exist, so we're going to uh, load the game from the slot. And same thing that we followed down here, we set the connection, and then we cast to our um, maze save game. But now what we want to do is we want to get all of those variables from our uh, save game and bring them into our ball pawn uh, variables. And all I did was I dragged off of here and I did a get, and whenever you do get, you can see all your variables, your default variables, uh, from your maze save game, or whatever you happen to call yours, and you get a reference to each of those. And then I dragged off of that, and I did a set. And what that's going to context sensitive pull up is my save under my save game data here. I want to set my best time. So I'm pulling the data from the variables from my, the maze save game, and then I'm setting the variables in my ball uh, pawn blueprint. So I did that for best time, level complete, unlocked, level name, and start level text. So here's where I would actually stop, but I want to test this out and show you how it works. So what I did is I grabbed my level index. Remember we get that from our end tile. Right now our end tile uh, level index is set to zero. Okay, that passes that zero to level index, so this should be um, a zero. And then I want to get the start level text off of my level index, so it's going to get index zero out of this array, and we're going to print that to the screen. Okay, so if we look back at our maze save game data at our start level text, you'll notice that the level text in index zero says, this is the easiest level, no tricks. All right, so now whenever we play our level, and just by the way, I have a delay here um, just to make sure that we don't get to the end of this uh, command before this uh, level index is passed. Whenever I hit play now, after a couple of seconds, it should say, this is the easiest level, no tricks. Worked perfectly. All right, well, let's set index level 4 just to make sure that um, that level index is passing properly and we're reading our data uh, properly from our maze save game. Okay, well let's go to the maze save game and look at what our start level text for index 4 says. Blue button controls blue gates, yellow button controls yellow gates. Get it? Alright, so I'll hit play. And it says blue buttons control blue gates, yellow buttons control yellow gates. Get it. Works perfectly. I'm going to set my end tile back to zero. Okay, so we know now that uh, on begin play, we're checking for a save game. If one doesn't exist, we create one. If one does exist, we load the data from that. Now, as we progress through the levels, that uh, data set's going to change. It's going to pull it from the save game, so whenever you record a new best time in a certain slot, um, when you pull that back up, it's going to load into the ball pawn uh, variables properly. All right, I think that's probably enough for this video, um, and we'll get into uh, next video how we're going to take our timer, and whenever we uh, end the level, we're going to uh, take our true branch off of here. Uh, when the level is ended, we're going to compare our current timer time counter to what's stored in the um, 
a save game and um, and see if it's a better score or a worse score. So see you next time.